Hello and welcome to Olympics Unleashed TV. I'm Elka Whalen and we are coming today from the ISU in Alexandria for the winter special edition. Well, happy green and gold day today to everyone. Now, if you're celebrating green and gold today, as you can see, they're the colors to be. We would love to see your photos and please tag the Australian Olympic team using the hashtag chasing winter. I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodian of this land and pay my respects to both the elders past and present. Well, what a start it has been to Beijing 2022. Have you been watching? Because we certainly have in our household and it has been amazing. Aerial skier Laura Peel and figure skater Brendan Kerry both competing in their third Olympic Games. What a huge achievement and they carried the Australian flag into the opening ceremony last Friday night. Then who stayed up on Sunday night to watch Australia? We had our best day in winter Olympic history with gold, woo, for Jakara Anthony in moguls and bronze for Tess Cody in the snowboard slope style. Now, for me, some of my favorite moments has been, we all want to hear about that gold medal, which has been amazing. But if you've been watching Channel 7, you're seeing some wonderful backstories on these athletes and watching someone like Tess Cody get up and win a bronze medal, her first Olympic medal has been amazing. And equally someone like Brittany Cox, who also has been competing in her fourth Olympics. Now for everybody watching in school right now, four Olympics means you've got over 16 years of training and more as well. So how incredible to be the top of your game in your country for four Olympics. So congratulations and shout out to Brittany Cox. That was a special moment for me. Now the Australian Olympic team at Beijing 2022 consists of 43 athletes. How amazing is that to think of the millions in our country and only 43 athletes in our country are representing our Olympic games this year in Beijing. 22 female and 21 male across five sports and 10 events. Now the youngest member is 16 year old Valentino Guselli in the snowboard half pipe. Now snowboarder Scotty James and mogul skier Britt Cox who we were speaking about before will both compete at their fourth Olympics joining six other Australians to even compete at four Olympics or more at a winter game. So huge shout out to them. Now we have some amazing athletes competing at these games. How good has it been watching Talia Gill and Dean Hewitt compete as the first ever Australian team in curling. And I've been seeing lots of people both on social media have a crack at that as well. So it's amazing when you watch winter sport of all these incredible events that they do that you can learn up and pick up from yourselves. Now, over the next few days, we'll see Bree Walker contest the women's monobob as it takes to make its Olympic debut. And as we watch and support this team, 2022 marks 20 years since we won our first Olympic gold medals with both Stephen Bradbury in the speed skating and Alyssa Camblin Warner in the freestyle aerial skiing at Salt Lake City in 2002. We certainly punch above our weight and this year we're off to a cracking start. So joining me here today is Pyeong Chang's 2018 Olympian in the men's moguls, Rowan Chapman Davies. And we will be talking to him shortly and hearing how incredible he is and his journey as well. But before we get to Rowan, let's check out the support that our winter team is receiving all around our country. Hey Beijing team, it's Jess Box here and I just wanted to wish you all good luck. We can't wait to watch you shred it out there. Enjoy the moment, embrace it, do your thing, trust yourselves, you've got this. Aussie Winter Olympians, all the best in Beijing. From Europe to North America to back home in Australia, green gold is behind you. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Oi, oi, oi. Good luck Australia, we'll be rooting for you from South Australia. Good luck at the Olympics game, you can do it. Hey Belle, good luck. First of all, in the Olympics. Woo! Hey Maddie, I just want to wish you good luck in the games and that I'm very proud of you. I am so proud of you. Good luck and go get them. So Rowan, today we're celebrating National Green and Gold Day, showing everyone across Australia showing their Aussie spirits. Now you competed in the Pyeongchang 2018 Winter Olympic Games. Tell us, what is it like for you wearing the green and gold? 
Oh, look, putting on that green and gold for the first time is just such an incredible experience. You know, Australia has such a, a rich history of sporting prowess. And, you know, to be asked to become a, a part of that community and, and a part of that culture is, is, you know, a feeling second to none. For me personally, you know, it was so humbling and, and I remember, remember being so proud to be asked and, you know, putting it on, it felt surreal. And, you know, I've retired now, but it's definitely a feeling that I'll, I'll take with me um, to my last day. And, you know, it's just, it's just such an incredible, you know, sensation and feeling, yeah. Well, let's rewind a bit here and let's talk about what it's like to be an Olympian. We know that there are millions in our country, but there's only just on 4,000 Olympians in Australia. What was that moment like for you being announced as an Olympian? Yeah, it's a very select group, um, you know, particularly in Australia, particularly for winter sports. And, you know, for me personally, going into Pyeongchang, it's, a, it's an Olympics that I was highlighting and, you know, targeting as an athlete. And, you know, a lot of people don't realise, but I was very, very close not to not making those games. Um, you know, as a, as a freestyle athlete in Moguls, you have to be in the top 30 in the world and, and each nation can only send up to four guys. And, you know, um, a couple of days before the games, I thought I hadn't made it. I was at the, the pre-Olympic um, training camp in Steeboat Springs in, in Colorado in the US. A great part of the world. It is, it was amazing. But I remember being there feeling like, you know, I hadn't been officially selected yet and felt like, you know, everyone else that was on that camp had been. And, you know, I actually stepped away from that camp at the time and my parents, you know, were in the next state over. I went there and, um, you know, I was, I was sort of licking my wounds a bit, feeling a bit down. But then that next morning I got a call from my coach and he said, Rowan, you've made the games. And to be able to share that moment with mum and dad, you know, my brother was there as well, was just absolutely, you know, phenomenal. And, you know, the next day I got on the plane, we flew to Korea and that was it, you know, next stop Korea. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. And as you say, once an Olympian, always an Olympian. For all the amazing young boys and girls watching, um, let's talk about something real for a moment. Talk about the hard moments. Talk about the moments like you just said then, that you're at a camp, you feel like you haven't performed. Talk about a moment that you had an event or race and it, it didn't work out from you. How do we build that definition of resilience? Yes, yeah, so as an athlete, you know, you experience so many ups and downs throughout your entire career. And for me personally, you know, I really found that I developed so much and I got so much out of overcoming whatever hurdles you might face along the way. You know, a big one for me in my personal career was in 2010, I had a terrible crash and, and ruptured my ACL in my left knee. And, you know, I remember at the time thinking like, is this something I can come back from? You know, is this something that I'm gonna be able to get back to how I was skiing before the injury? And it really defined me, you know, I set my mind to it. I, th I said, you know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get back. Um, and, you know, as an athlete, I developed so much and I feel like I came back stronger from that experience and that, you know, what everything that that taught me. And it was really funny, we were just speaking before that a great quote that I was reading yesterday said, the difference between great and average is consistency. And it is, isn't it? Consistency is every human being waking up every day and repeating the same thing over and over. And if you are consistent in what you're doing, that will be the definition point between being average and great. Now, I know all the boys and girls are wondering, and I am definitely, tell us about an epic crash or crashes that you've had. Oh, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> You know, I think a lot of my teammates as well, we've all had some pretty good crashes um, in our time. You know, there was that time in 2010 where, you know, I had a really unfortunate landing um, and ruptured my ACL. But, you know, every day when you're out there skiing, you know, you often have a tumble. You know, things don't always go to plan. Yes. Um, but, you know, it's, it's how well can you pick yourself up and, and fix that so you don't do that again in the same spot or whatever. But, I mean, you know, again, in my personal journey, I've had my ACL that I've had operated on, my left wrist, my right shoulder. You know, that was only, you know, um, nine months out from the games that, that I had surgery on my right shoulder. Um, but, you know, you, you can get over it and you can get back up. Well, for someone who's retired, you're looking pretty fit and strong yourself there. <laughs> Tell us how a boy from the northern beaches over the north side, it was incredible reading Rowan's bio. Um, we both have something in common, the great northern beaches. Tell us how you on the beach, but you've ended up in winter sport. Yeah, How did you get into skiing? It's kind of a, a unique story, isn't it? You know, I think, and it's like with any Australian winter athlete, but for me, um, you know, both my mum and dad, they love skiing. And, you know, I got introduced to skiing through that at a young age. And I made some friends when I was skiing. And for me, you know, skiing in those early days in particular, it wasn't about just being the best I could be. It was just, I was just having fun. Yes. And I mean, I was just having fun up until, you know, 18, 19, 20, all the way through to the end of my career. 
And um, you know, I'm just so incredibly lucky to, to have the career I've had and to have the, you know, the friendships that I've been able to form throughout my career. Um, and it's definitely you know, something I attribute some of my success to as an athlete. And um, you know, I'm sure all these friendships and bonds that I've created with you know, the Australian teammates, but also you know, skiers from across the world are, are friendships that I'll cherish for a long time to come. And isn't it amazing, one of the big things that you realise about sport, whatever sport it is that you may be thinking about or that you are invested heavily into now, one of the great things that comes out from it is your friendships because they're the spice of life and they're the things that carry you on, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So good. Tell us, um, we all want to know, as a student, for everyone watching in the classroom, were you naughty? Were you cheeky? Were you the one at the front? What kind of student well, were you? Look, I think um, whether I wanted to be or not, I was kind of, I kind of had to be you know, pretty, pretty on the straight and narrow when it came to school. <laughs> um, I went to a school in Sydney called Sydney Grammar School. Great school. Yeah, and but you know, they're very kind of academic in their focus. So particularly, you know, up until year 12, that, that for me was, was probably my main focus was that. And, you know, skiing was something that, that ran parallel to school and was something that, you know, I knew I was very passionate about and I was good at it. But it wasn't until, you know, I finished year 12, um, I kind of put schooling aside and ticked that box. And then I could go and really chase the thing that I wanted to get after and, you know, go and excel in snow sports. Yeah. So good. And so, so far here in Beijing in the 2022 Winter Olympics, what's been a standout so far for you? Or oh, without a doubt, hands down, watching Jakara Anthony so get the good. gold medal. I mean, well done, Jack. Like from the bottom of my heart, that was an incredible performance. Um, but all the mogul guys, you know, it's such a strong team. And I think we see that, you know, in Channel 7's broadcast, how how well these guys get on together and how, you know, each each competitor, although they're skiing against one another, they're pushing each other to achieve more as a team. And, and wasn't that amazing on that note when you just said the team and you were talking about your friendships tying everything in, mm. seeing Jakara on the shoulders of, as you said, of all the Aussie winter athletes there, that picture was just gold. And, you know, she, she had written something like, you know, couldn't have done it without you. And it just shows how close the team is. And that I think Absolutely. drives success, being all together and cheering one another on. Absolutely. That is so good. Now for anyone watching that wants to get into winter to sport and into skiing what would you say what would be the biggest inspiration you could give them oh geez I mean like anything just have a go if it's something that you've been thinking about or something you want to try just have a go see if you like it see if it's for you if not that's okay but you know you don't know until you try so give it a crack thanks so much Rowan now as you can see you might be listening to us but you might be looking at the amazing talent behind and so Rowan I think it might be time for what we call our have a go segment so what do you think? You think you could jump on there and have a go? Look, I'm gonna have a go, but I think I might end up on my bottom at one form or another. So let's let's see what happens, yeah. Amazing. Hi, I'm Chanel, I'm a figure skater and a dancer. Hi, I'm Andrew, I'm a figure skater and a coach, and we're here today to teach Olympian Rowan Chapman Davies how to figure skate. You guys make it look so much more graceful. <laughs> <laughs> great job, Rowan. Great job, BK. Great things happen when you have a go. Woo. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sweet. We're finishing off Olympics Unleashed TV with our special guest today, Rowan Chapman Davies, with some quick questions to make him think on the spot. So Rowan, are you ready? I'm ready, I'm ready guys. Okay, favorite Disney character? Uh, Maui from Moana. Oh yes, Moana, yes. that was so good, that movie. Favorite color? Uh, green and gold, yes. Yes, <laughs> I love orange. <laughs> favorite book? Uh, happiest Man Alive. Okay, if you could choose any Flavour milkshake, what's it gonna be? Always chocolate, guys, always chocolate. Okay, you're in the canteen line at school, you've got to choose between a meat pie and a sausage roll. What one are you choosing? Ooh, I'm gonna say a meat pie. Yeah, nice, with sauce? Uh, absolutely, tomato sauce. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Amazing, favourite song? Um, look, on the Moana theme, I've been vibing the Moana soundtrack as well, so, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stay true. <laughs> Amazing, yeah. I've got to introduce you to Aladdin. Yeah. You're like Disney, yeah. I love it, I love it. Tell me if you could be anything else rather than what you are right now, which remember, always be a first Ooh. rate you and not a second rate someone else. What are you going to be? That's a tough one, but I think I love surfing, so I'm gonna say a professional surfer. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. On that note, how good was Kelly Slater the other day? I know, it's incredible. He's 50 years old and just won another event. Yeah, inspirational. Okay, winter or summer? 
absolutely winter. Come yeah, on. absolutely <laughs> not summer. It's absolutely freezing. And final question, favorite holiday destination? Ooh, it's always going to be a ski resort, skiing, because that's what I love, and I was so lucky to do it for so many years. So where are you going, though? Uh, I'm going to go to Telluride in the US of A. Yeah. Okay, never yeah. heard of it. Absolutely. It's just a big mountain, steep yeah. slopes, and just so much fun to ski. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Thanks so much, Rob. Awesome. We've loved having you on. Thanks for having me. We're now going to take you directly inside the Olympic Village in Beijing, where we have the Australian men's moguls team who will be answering some of your questions. Take a look. Hi everybody, my name's Brody. I'm James. I'm Cooper. And I'm Matt, and we're the Freestyle Mogul team. And you might be wondering right now why we are wearing masks, and that's because uh, whilst we are here in China for the Olympics, we are still in the midst of a global pandemic uh, with COVID-19, and we're just trying to do our bit to make sure we keep everyone as safe as possible. I've just come off my first Olympic debut. Um, last night, uh, I finished six in the moguls field, so I'm super stoked with my run. All right, so we got a few questions here, and question one is, what is the best part about the Olympic Village? From Brooke in Craigieburn, Victoria. Yeah, it's pretty special here. Um, the Australian Olympic team have done a really good job of setting up the place really um, I guess homely, like you, you see behind us, we have nice photos of Australian um, snow gums and snow fields back home. Um, and then we also have some luxuries as well with, you know, really nice espresso uh, coffee and also like the breakfasts and food that's provided here is really awesome. Like also just being in, a, in like a place where you're surrounded by all the best athletes in the world is pretty cool. All right, so here we have a question from Matt in Perth. Um, what does your room look like? Do they have cardboard beds like they do in Tokyo? The rooms are actually amazing. Um, really spacious compared to, I think, what we probably expected before getting here. And, uh, and the beds themselves are supremely comfortable. I've been sleeping like a baby since we first got here. And uh, overall, it's just been, yeah, it's been a really enjoyable experience. Yeah, well, us, all of us four boys are in a um, like a three-bedroom apartment together, which is quite nice. So we're kind of used to sharing space together and being on the road, you know, for multiple months of the year. So it's um, we kind of got a good environment in our little apartment, in our room. Um, but no I'm, cardboard beds. No cardboard no beds. Cardboard beds. <laughs> this is a question from Jessica in Darwin. Who inspired you to play your sport? Um, I would say the person that inspired me for, to do the sport is actually the people sitting in these chairs with me. Um, I've sort of grown up in the sport with them and um, in Australia it's sort of a small sport but just being around these guys has really sort of pushed me to want to do this sport and, and get better. Yeah, yeah likewise. I personally, um, I mean when I first got into the sport it was watching Dale Begsmith win gold at the Torino Olympics in 2006 but as Jim just said, uh, being around these guys has, has been where I've derived the majority of my inspiration throughout my career. It's it's been an absolute pleasure to to train alongside you guys and and compete and and just support each other and and I feel like it's been a wonderful journey so far and I'm really looking forward to what the future holds for us. Yeah, but I think one thing as well that we are uh, we're all very fortunate enough is that we really enjoy what we do and uh, we find mogul skiing so fun and our passion so strong for it. So. You know, I guess one takeaway from us is that, you know, if you can find something that you're really passionate about and that you really enjoy, then sort of follow those aspirations and dreams. Yeah. An interesting one from Candice in Brisbane. How cold is it in Beijing? Oh my God. It's cold. Very cold. Very. <laughs> I, I think I can finally feel my toes from, uh, from last night. It, it took a few hours for them to come back, but um, yeah. no, we can confirm it's really cold here. It's uh, among what probably top top three coldest places we've ever skied in our lives. Yeah, we're talking about minus thirty, minus twenty to minus thirty, and then yeah. very strong, cold, brisk winds. So this is from Samantha in Wollongong, New South Wales. Oh. How do you manage stress and nerves? Yeah, so we have a sports psychologist with us. Um, she, Stacy, gives us some really good, uh, really good tips and tools. Um, to help manage our, our stress levels um, when preparing for the gate or preparing to be in the gate and for when we're skiing. Um, simple things just as breathing um, and just a simple visualization of you skiing down the course. Being nervous is actually a good thing. So if you guys are ever out there, you know, before a sports event or anything like that and 
you're a bit worried about feeling nervous, I think in the end it actually is a good thing and it shows that you care about it and you know, it's something that's worth doing. Yeah. Yeah, and one, one more thing that I'd add on that is uh, when you are uh, about to do something that is making you nervous, so a, a big important goal to you, it's important to uh, focus on the, the specific pieces of the task that you're about to perform. So if you focus on, like for us, an example for us is like when we're looking at a mogul run that we're about to perform, you know, it, it can seem quite daunting when you're standing at the top of the course, like there's just so much that you have to manage in this run. But if you break it down into the specific pieces of the run that you have to um, check off along the way, then it seems much more manageable. You're just basically ticking off goals as you go down the run. So I know that I have to approach the, the first jump in exactly the right way here and I have to put myself over here on the landing and I have to stand up when I land and ski out. And those kind of things are, are really, I think, what helps ease the nerves when you just focus on the specific um, yeah, technical aspects of whatever you're about to do instead of getting caught up in how big or daunting the task may be. All right, so here is a good one from Ruby in Albany. What has been your worst injury? That's a pretty good one for everyone here. Matt, do you want to start with you? Yeah, yeah well, Fresh one. Um, <clears throat> for the most part of my career, I've been more or less injury free. Um, up until recently, I broke my collarbone, um, my left collarbone, um, about six weeks out from the Olympics. So I had to quickly kind of go home and have surgery and uh, rest up and, you know, um, do my best to get back here. And yeah, pretty happy to be back here with the team. I've had some back problems um, throughout the years, uh, which is always really upsetting, but you know, you do the work and preparation uh, so you don't get injured. So I've had a real injury. Um, <laughs> I, I actually broke my femur when I was probably a little bit younger than you guys. I was uh, 10 years old or maybe some of you guys are that age. And your femur is your, the biggest bone in your body right here on your, on your quad. Um, and I was actually skiing with my dad and we crashed into each other, and uh, this bone was snapped in three places. So, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a good injury. Um, but surprisingly, we kept skiing. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, unfortunately my my career has probably been a little like peppered with a few more injuries over the years, uh, and they unfortunately managed to coincide with the major uh, events. The the last two Olympics that I participated in, I had um, in, in 2014, I had. Uh, back problems, bulging discs in my lower back, and then uh, at the last Olympics, I, I ruptured my ACL in my knee and had to have surgery five months beforehand. Uh, managed to get myself back here with the back there with the team, but um, sometimes these things just happen, and when they do happen, yeah, it hurts and it's not very enjoyable. But um, there's always a way to get back, and when you've got a great team around you like we do, um, you can always work towards getting yourself back. This is from Blake in Dubbo. What is your favourite country to compete in? My favourite place to compete in, compete in is, um, it's not one of our major events, but just compete, being able to compete back home mm. um, in Perisher. Uh, we have our national titles there each year in August. Um, that's, that's where I learned to mogul ski and grew up skiing and being able to compete in front of my family and friends is pretty special. My favourite place to ski is um, probably in Deer Valley. I think a lot of these guys will talk about it or would agree with me is yeah. we have this really iconic event. It's kind of like our, you know, biggest event outside of the Olympic Games and it's in America, in Utah. Um, and it's probably one of the best events we have, just the way that it's set up. It's under the lights, there's a big crowd and it's really a special uh, event every year. My favorite place to ski uh, was definitely, it's definitely France. Mm. I really enjoy it there. Uh, culture's cool, the big Alps. mountains. Um, yeah, plenty of croissants, so it's, it's good. <laughs> um, this one is from Chris in Adelaide. <clears throat> Have you met people from other countries? Are they nice? Absolutely. I, uh, I think one of the best things about the sport of mogul skiing is that we have this, uh, phenomenal sense of camaraderie amongst all the nations that we compete against on the tour and um, some of my best friends in the world are from other countries because I've I've had the privilege of skiing with them and against them on the World Cup tour for you know, the last 10 years. You should probably uh, you know, explain that with uh, all the pins you got here. Ah, that's a good point Coop. So one thing that we do at the Olympic Games is you're given a couple of pins from your home country. So as Australia we have a boxing kangaroo pin 
we have two other pins that are sort of Australian Olympic edition. And one of the things that you do is all the other countries are given the same thing. And so you can swap your Australia pin for another country's pin. And so I've got, you know, a Norwegian one, a German one, one from Kazakhstan, which is pretty fun, one from America. So that's a pretty cool thing that we do here at the Olympics. Thanks so much for all the question, guys. I really appreciate it. And I hope you learned a little bit more about our sport and you can cheer on uh, the rest of the Aussie athletes and the rest of the Olympics. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Thank you. How good was that to hear from Brody, James, Cooper, and Matt as well? Well done, lads. Australian snowboarder Tess Cody made her Olympic debut a few days ago and came away with a bronze medal in the slope style. Now let's now hear from her as she speaks about an insight into resilience and dedication to her sport. I've had my fair share of falls, but the key is dusting yourself off and remaining resilient. And telling yourself, you've got this. Don't take things too seriously. At the end of the day, the most important thing is having fun. Looks daunting, right? Don't worry, you don't have to start here. Make sure you work your way up and take things at your own pace. Always stay focused on what's in front. But also, make sure you don't miss out on the beauty of where you are. And at the end of the day, it's all about having fun. Great advice then from Tess Cody. Congratulations on your bronze medal and good luck for the snowboard Big Air starting from Monday. Now, this is all that we have time for today and I hope you're enjoying your green and gold edition because as you can see, we definitely are. Now, there are still plenty of Aussies in action, so keep your eyes peeled to both radio and TV and of course, checking us out on Olympic Unleashed as we've got alpine skiing, bobsled, cross country skiing, figure skating, freestyle skiing, short track speed skating, skeleton and snowboard. And that's just to name a few. There are so many wonderful events that you can do at the Olympics in the winter sports. And as you will see in the coming weeks and days, you will experience all of these that they have to offer. So please make sure you keep tuning into Channel 7 for the remainder of Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Games and cheer on our Aussie team. We continually need the sport and so do the athletes as well. Whilst you are in your living room screaming, I promise you they can hear you. We always say Aussie, 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 Oi, oi, oi. So thanks for being with us today and we look forward to you joining us again on Turn 2 for another episode of Olympics Unleashed TV. One, three, four.